Have you ever been booked for a gig and then you realised after the gig that you missed out on loads of opportunities? Maybe you didn't get any photos or you didn't get a decent footage of you performing. You didn't get a chance to say hello to the promoter. You just missed out on loads of things. You were so focused on the gig that when you got there, once that was done, everything else went out the window. Or maybe you ended up on the drink and you, the, you wasted the night completely. It all depends. Every DJ is different. But when you do a gig, there are certain things that you should do every single time. And there's a couple of things that you should completely avoid doing. There's some things that I see DJs do or I've seen in the past that in the back room, in the back office, you see the promoter saying, well, they're never getting booked again. And the DJ never knows why. We're gonna run through all of that in this video. This was a training video that was done in 2021 during lockdowns. It was a, a $2,000 program, but I'm giving it to you for free because, hey, I want all of the DJs out there to be able to do well. So it's on my YouTube for you to consume. Get stuck in, there's loads more like it. Like, subscribe, and let's, Hop into the train. Let's hop into the during. Uh, again, nice and easy. I can only draw squares or triangles, and I can't even really draw squares. <laughs> uh, but what do we do during? Okay, so the, the two most obvious, the first one that we're going to be giving you this week is a shot list, okay? This is when you're at the event, having a shot list that you've thought about beforehand of shots that you want to get while you're there. Now, ideally, you're not taking these shots. You have somebody else with you and you've just given them a shot list on a business card. You know, it's a small little cardboard sheet where just going, make sure you just get all of those. And your each shot list will be different depending on what type of artist you are. Um, like if you're an EDM artist, you're going to want loads of photos. Um, usually of you bouncing around on some piece of Ikea furniture, being an absolute terrorist. But if you're a techno artist, you're not going to want <laughs> that many photos. You know, you're going to want a, 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 a couple while you're performing. So uh, shot list, I will run through you in the modules and you can create your own shot list. But the, the purpose of it is so you've got later on stuff to post. The main hurdle I hear of artists when we're running through the month's content and preparing it is that they've no photos and they forgot to get photos. So the purpose of the shot list is that you have stuff for your after campaign and to use in your socials later down the road, okay? Some stuff that you can just to get the, the, the juices flowing. Obviously, shots of you performing um, are obvious enough. Uh, pics with other artists. Um, other artists that you played with. Uh, picks outside the club. I mean, how many photos of artists have you seen with them with their with their DJ trolley in front of Bergain? Uh, the shot outside the club. Um, sometimes you see artists if it's a big gig and there's a pre dinner, they'll put up some shots of that. Uh, gig prep during the day. If you're a vinyl jock, then those photos are going to look great. Otherwise, get inventive. There's loads you can do. But the important thing is that you know the shots in advance that you want to get and hand that over to a friend that's with you. If it's just you with the gig, it's, it, it's different. But um, you want to make sure you're not missing any of those shots. Okay. Uh, also on the shot list, we could add the record set. So if we want to record the set, um, this has a number of purposes. Obviously, you can release it later. Um, you can use it for your radio show and the promoter will love you for it. Um, also, if you are recording it on video, if you stuck up a GoPro video, well, uh, if you have done the stuff in your before unit and you've asked for page access, well, now you can do a live stream with the video. You know, you can go live later on with the video and target it to all of the, the followers of that event. So yeah, sure, you can target it to your own followers, but that's a great one because that will suck them in and then they're going to be on your Facebook pixel and they're going to be seeing all your future posts as well. And this is just what we talked about, about bringing new followers in and nurturing nurturing them. Um, so that is that. Um, for the post list, you've got a shot list but you should have a post list separate. So what are you actually posting while you're at the event? 
because the shot list is for later. And um, you don't need to go too deep on that. Just remember that, um, I mean, you, it, it's kind of like a shot list. You can put up whatever photos you want during the gig. But one to bear in mind is if you have somebody putting stuff on your Instagram story, like a lot of artists still put one or two up, but if you can get somebody to do a decent one, where you actually have a bit of a takeover running on your own Instagram, even if you don't have a big following yet. Let's say, let's say you've just started a new alias. Let's use the worst case example. You've got 100 followers on your Instagram page. It might feel silly to do a takeover for your gig where you're posting about your prep, you're posting about going to the venue, at the venue, before, playing and after, and you've only got 100 followers. So I, I think a lot of people have imposter syndrome where even if you do have a bit of a following, a couple of thousand followers you're still not doing that but it's really good to do that because um it makes a great highlight save the thing uh, as a highlight and what's happening is makes a good highlight using the modules over the last two weeks we're targeting all our main promoters aren't we we're targeting the guys that we want to play for in our country in in europe in the states all the festivals and while no, no one might see the story while it goes live, what would be very good is if you have two or three or four good takeovers from these clubs on your Instagram story. It shows them that you make the effort when you play the gig. It also shows them that you are playing gigs. It just looks professional. So during the gig, don't think about your Instagram story as a now thing. Think about it as a saved highlight for later. You're showing what you're capable of. You're showing that you know how to promote and that you're professional and all all that good stuff, okay? Uh, then again, we've got the rapport checklist. So beforehand, we reached out and just said thanks for the gig and confirmed the date. But when you're at a gig, you should be trying, it's not always possible, but you should be trying to find the promoter um, or whoever's looking, like if it's a big festival, might, you'll it'll, it'll usually be lower down the line. But if you're playing for a promoter in a club or... Um, a big event, make sure you're at least introducing yourself to all the, the important parties. Introducing yourself to the promoter, introducing yourself to the club owner, introducing yourself to anybody. Um, and just making sure you're, you know, putting your hand in theirs and looking them in the eye. Seems obvious. A lot of artists don't think about that. They'll show up and they'll be all excited for the gig. Maybe it's at a festival. They'll run up, they'll play the stage and they'll get off and go back to their friends. Try and find these people that are organizing it or that have booked you or the artist liaison, shake their hand because you're going to be following up and you have much more success when you follow up on email when you've met the person. So make sure you're introducing yourself. Uh, make sure you're ma making friends with the residents. This seems obvious, but uh, these are boxes that have to be ticked. Excuse my right. And I'll try and make, making friends with the residents. Like we discussed in previous modules, you can invite these guys on to do a guest mix on your radio show. You can, there's lots of ways that you can make life good for them and sort of pull yourself a bit further into this promoter's world. Uh, but making friends with the residents, adding them on socials after and sort of engaging them, they're not going to book it, but they're already playing for the event that wants to. So you're just pulling yourself a bit further into that world. And then one that I, and I've seen, DJs make this mistake before and I've just thought quietly to myself you're after doing yourself out of a gig there making friends with everybody <laughs> like if you go to a club and you're booked for a club in Manchester, Liverpool, Bristol whatever when you go to the venue don't forget that each little club is like a little ecosystem you don't it's it's not it's not about like making friends with the promoter and having him like you and doing the same with the resident DJs. Don't forget the, the bouncer on the door on the way in, the bar lady, the girl at the cloakroom could be his girlfriend, could be his. So don't be a dick. It should, it should go without saying, but just be really friendly. And um, like a, a club is quite often like a little ecosystem. They'll sit down and have drinks after they close up and you might get booked and be lovely to the promoter and they could be chatting about you after and the bar lady be like, he's a dick. He was a dick. He came up. He was a little cock, cocky bastard. And straight away, the promoter would just be like, ah, fuck it. We won't fuck him again. And it was just that simple. Just because you were rude to the bar lady. It's only a small thing, but it, it's worth noting. It's just more a mindset when you go into a venue. Just 
be cool, make friends. Uh, and then the fourth one uh, for during is we want to avoid bumps in the road. Uh, and that's just a continuation really on don't be a dick. But there's, there's a couple of things that I've seen artists lose gigs for. And it's the type of thing that you never find out. Um, you never find out you didn't get booked again for this reason. But it's like, let's say, uh, just if you're unprofessional, so being unprofessional. And if you can't read my writing, don't worry, I've got a module <laughs> coming with all this this week, which is readable. Being unprofessional. So like being rude, being too drunk, uh, being late, shit like that. Just the basic stuff. OK, we won't spend too much time on that because it's it's rude, late. You know the jazz. But then the other hidden thing that people don't think about is if you're bringing guests, quite often you might bring two or three friends they have to be as professional as, as you if you're bringing them in as guests and they're they're kind of, they're coming in the side door with you and they're in the booth with you because if they're rude or if they're in a cat hole or if they're drunk or if they're, you get judged on that. Now you might not, but you might. So it's about uh, guests, just letting any, any guests that come with you, just make sure they don't take the piss again. Um, and th that guests one is one that I have seen so many artists lose gigs for, but they don't know they've lost the gig. You'll be in the back office just chatting and, and, and you know, it, it'll come up about how one of one of the DJ's guests was just on cat or he spilled drinks into the decks or he robbed something or, and it's just, well, that DJ will never be booked again. Um, obvious, it should seem obvious, but yeah. And uh, yeah, taking the piss with two things. There's loads of things you could take the piss with, but guest list um, and drinks. Now, if you're playing a decent club, you should be getting some guest list and you should be you should be getting some drinks. You should be getting enough drinks so that you, the DJ, aren't buying drinks. I've seen so many DJs lose gigs over this. And again, they never get told this is why they don't get booked again, because maybe it's a small like if you get booked for a promoter in a, a decent club in Manchester, usually it's a guy like yourself um that has another job and breaking even is a tough thing to do so if you're sending over a guest list with 20 30 40 names which which happens that promoter will not want to be booking you again send over five and you'll be fine sending over huge ones uh that's taking the piss also drinks if you're getting out enough drinks just for yourself fine but uh if, it, 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 I, I've seen DJs get maybe 10 beers and then their mates of them all drank in, you know, 15 minutes and they're chasing the promoter for more and more and more. Just be wary of that. Those are small little side ones that we won't go too deep on, but very important. Hey, thanks for watching my video. If you've made it this far, please do me a favor. Like, subscribe so you can get all the, the future content and let me know in the comments what you thought of this video. But more importantly, if you're a DJ that wants to get more bookings, if you want to lock in better clubs, better festivals, and more of them, uh, I want to give you the system that we use to do this with DJs. I want to give you the full blueprint, uh, all the training to run you through it, and any of the, the tools and, uh, and templates that you need. There's a link in the description down below where you can go and get it now for free. Uh, go help yourself. Let me help you. Let's get you booked together. The link is below. Uh, did I mention like and subscribe? Like and subscribe. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Cheers. Bye-bye.